around this place to obey God. Whatever Amen. God Amen. wants to do, that's what we're going to just obey the Lord and do. Amen. She got me to look at some of it and said, well, Brother Rob, maybe you can do it. I said, no, the seed was planted in you, so you've got to deliver it. Right. It'd be great, you know, if a, a woman got pregnant, the seed was planted, the woman got pregnant, and another woman could deliver it, but it doesn't work like that. That woman has to deliver that seed. That, same thing with the Word of God. I never could preach another man's message. The seed had to be planted within me, and then... When that seed is planted within me, then I can deliver. So Sister Tisa is going to come, and you know she's probably a little bit nervous. As, you know, any of you would be probably if you were in her position. How many know that to be true? Yeah. Amen. How many? How many of you women, when it came time for that seed to come forth, you were a little bit nervous? You was a little bit nervous when it came time for that seed. You were wanting it to come forth, but you may be a little bit nervous about this whole situation. So we're just going to obey God tonight. And I, I, saw they, I saw a few little things going on. I don't know what they got going on, but we're just going to go let the Lord have His way. So if you open up your heart, your ears, but mainly open up your heart to receive what the Lord has to say, I tell you what, God can have a word for you. How many wants to hear a word from the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Tisa. I'm the kind of preacher that don't mind backing up and just let the Lord have His way. <laughs> How many knows that huh, when the Lord tells you to do something, sometimes you want to just take off running the other way? Because I'm like, Lord, I just, I'm not cut out to do this. I'm just not. But anyway, you got to do what the Lord tells you to do. That's right. And uh, it was, I guess, it was about a couple, the reason that this came about was a couple weeks ago, Brother Ralph had made just one little simple statement about the court being when it goes under the water and it pops back up. You know, it goes down and it pops right back up. And uh, I began to think about that and I had, was, the Lord had dropped the story of Hannah. Not my daughter, but the story of Bob about Hannah and Samuel into my spirit. And this went on about two weeks. I didn't even tell Michael about two weeks off and on. And I was in a little grasp of things and people say things. And I heard this message one time about this woman that preached on about, about Hannah. And the message, her title of her message was, I ain't drunk, but I'm just desperate. And Hannah... As everybody knows, if you've read the story or even ever heard the message of Hannah, Hannah was a godly woman. She was pure before God. There was nothing ever negative said about Hannah. She was gentle. She was kind. She was tenderhearted. She was compassionate. She was gracious. And there was nowhere in the world that when they spoke of Hannah that people didn't know that there was favor brought to Hannah. Right. Hannah had the favor of God. No matter where she went, what she done, when they seen her, they seen favor. And I just, tonight I think that when I think of Hannah, I so want to be like her. Yes. Because when they speak Hannah, somebody in the heavens would say favor. Favor. Everywhere she went, God spoke favor. Oh, yes. And Hannah didn't have an easy road. She didn't have an easy road. Hannah was barren. She couldn't have children. And she so desperately wanted a child. And God put her in a house with a woman, Panina, that could bear children. And every day, day in and day out, Hannah would pray, God, I don't understand why you put me in this place. You know that I want to have a child. You know I want to bear a child. But Panina was the type she would gig and she would tell uh, Hannah, look at me. Look what I've done. I must have been a good person. Look at all about me. Look. Look what I have. Look at all the children I have. Because back in the day, men, we all know that they was accepted to have two or three wives. That's just what they've done. Well, 
uh, what was his name, the husband? Elkanah. Elkanah, the husband. He had two wives because Hannah was barren and he didn't figure that she would ever bear a child. So he had got a wife that had, would have children. And anyway, Hannah, she walked and she talked with God constantly. She walked with God. and she. But there come a time when she was tired. She got tired. Oh, yes, God. <laughs> and she would go before God, but God would never answer her. But Elkanah, her husband, give her everything. He even give her favor. He give her the most of everything, more than what he give Panina. He give her all the jewels, all the wealth, the fine home, anything that she could ask for. He loved Hannah that much. And he said, whatever you want, Hannah, I will give it to you, whatever you want. But he gave her all those things, but there was still something that she longed for. Oh, yes. In her heart, she wanted that child, but she knew she couldn't have that child. So she would go, she'd ask, oh, could I let me go to the temple? And I'd go, and she'd go, and she'd pray, and she'd plead before God, and she'd leave in the same shape she'd come. When she'd go back home, she had to face Panina all over again. All over again, she was tormented all over again. Oh, Why do I have to stay here, God? Why do I have to be around this constantly? Why are you punishing me so? Because at the time, Hannah didn't see the favor that she had with God. She didn't know the favor. She walked through a lot of things. A lot of things Hannah walked through. And yes. today we do, we walk through so much. And we feel at times, Lord, I don't know. I just don't know if I can make that next step in you. I don't know. You've left me here. You left me here in this place. And you know my heart's desire. You know what I need. All of this other stuff is not what I need. I don't need the clothes. I don't need the furniture. I don't need it. I don't need it. It's just like the little woman, that's what I was going to say, that had the ten coins. She had ten coins. And she was sitting there and everything was due. She had everything was due. And she had ten little coins. But she lost one. And she began to count her coins and she had one, two, three. Because she knew tomorrow the life field would be due. She knew that everything that month was going to be due. And if I didn't have exactly ten coins, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. And she began to search her coins and there was only nine. All she had was nine measly coins. <laughs> so she got the broom out and she said, I got to sweep. I got to clean this house. I got to clean it. She every nook and cranny. She told her husband, you can go to bed if you want to go to bed. Kids, you can go to bed. Lift up that rug. Let's see if that coin is under there. I've got to have that coin. Oh, because without that coin, I cannot live. We cannot live. We cannot make it. So she swept the house and she swept the house. Sometimes we have to. That's what the altar is for. Folks, do we know that sometimes when we go to this altar, we've got to sweep. We've got to clean it out. We've got to sweep and leave nothing unturned. Where is my coin? I've got to find my coin. Somebody help me find the coin. I've got to have that coin. I can't go to bed until I get this coin. Somebody help me find my coin. So she swept and she swept and she swept and she stayed up till she was exhausted. Till she was exhausted till she finally, finally she found that coin. And she began to praise and she began to worship. And she worshiped and she praised. Because see, sometimes we never understand the praise of people. Why? They come in and they praise and they don't know the road that we've walked on. Why do I praise my God? Why do I lift my hands and I say, thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you've given me. Because you don't know if you haven't walked. You don't know. If you haven't been there, you don't know. I've got to find the coin. I've got to find the coin. I'm searching. Where is it? Where is it? Hannah, every day, she would go to the temple and, Lord, here I am one more time. One more time. I'm begging you, Lord. I'm begging you how much more do I have to give to you? Where else do I have to go? What else do I have to do? What do I have to put up with? I'm tired of Panina. I'm sick and tired of her. I can't take her anymore. Move her out of my house if you have to. Take her and those children. I cannot deal 
anymore. Can't deal with it anymore. I'm done. Her husband, she asked the last time, Elkanah said, Hannah, haven't I given you everything? Oh, God. Haven't I given you the world? I've given you, I love you so much, Hannah. I have given you everything. And she looked at him and she said, let me go to the temple. Let me go. I got to go to Shiloh. They went and gathered at Shiloh. She said, but yet I got to go to the temple. I've got to go just one more time. Let me go just one more time. One more time, Lord. And Elkanah didn't really want to let her go. And he was like, why are you so depressed? Why do you sit there crying when you have everything that a woman could ever ask for? Everything. She said, but please, Elkanah. Because she didn't want to tell him. She didn't want to tell him that he wasn't enough. That he wasn't enough. But there was something that she really, really needed. So she went to the temple. She went to the temple. She prayed. And sometimes, you know, I heard this preacher say that sometimes the heart's so deep till there's no verbal sounds that can come out because your heart's so badly till you cannot even make a sound. But yet your heart is crying out to God. Oh, yeah. And I can just see Hannah as she's praying and the tears are flowing and she's not a word is coming out of her mouth. But the motions are there and she's up looking up to God. I don't understand her heart's cry. Not even verbally saying it because she's so weak and she's so tired. Lord, I don't understand why you brought me to this place. Why haven't you given me the thing that I need? Just the thing that I need. And she just went on and she staggered in the temple and she staggered in the temple and she went before the king or the priest. And uh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, she went before him and he said, Hannah, why are you so drunken? You need to, in other words, lay off the wine. You, you, you're staggering all over. You're making a shame, just a shame of yourself. Uh -huh. Quit the drinking. Uh -huh. And she looked at him and she was just, she said, I'm so sorry. She said, but I'm not, bro I'm not drunken. She said, but I'm just broken. Broken, I'm sad. She said, do you understand that I'm barren? <laughs> and I prayed and I was just praying. That's all I was doing. I was just praying that God would give me my desire. And he looked at her. And when he looked at her, he granted. He said, go, Hannah. Go and whatever you have desired, God will give it to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hannah went home. She went home. Panina. Oh, how I love you, Panina. How I love you, baby yes, girl. Lord. I'm so glad that you were yes, in my Lord. life. I'm so glad that you're here in my life, <coughs> Panina. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But God granted, and he gave her a son. After all the toil and the struggle, he gave her a, he gave her a son, and the son's name was Samuel. Oh, Samuel! And that's where the story ends. God, for as Hannah, the Lord gave her a son. He granted the desires of her heart. See, He will give us the desires if we just hold on, but we have to go through some stuff. I like this the part where they, she said this about David and then I'm going to turn it over back over to Brother Ralph. I can find it. I like this. It says, tell someone I'm still here. I've been through some stuff, but you know what? I'm still here. Oh yes. I'm here because he walked with me. He talked with me. I'm here because he whispered. It's okay. You're going to make it. He talked me back from a nervous breakdown. I'm with you. He talked with me. When nobody didn't think that you was going to make it. And they looked at you and then in scorn. Well, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. I just cannot believe this. Why does she want to act the way she acts? But you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't under Why is she praising like she does? Why does she do the things she does? Why does she lift her hands? Uh, it's because God has granted me the desires of my heart. Because you don't know the times that 
my children have went hungry. You don't know the struggles that I've had to walk through to wonder, Lord, where is this going to come from? Where is that going to come from? You see the sickness. they sick. What I'm going to do, I know from experience walking through this past year, I'm going to tell you, it's, it was hell on earth, people. Uh, I'm not exaggerating to you one bit. Yeah. I walked through literal hell on earth. Uh, My sanity, I almost didn't have sanity, period. Go there was times I walked and I cried and I walked. Michael can tell you, I, all I knew, this is what I do <coughs> at night. I would take the, the word because I knew, I knew that when I, that I had to stand on the word. The only true thing that I knew that was taught in my spirit, I would take it and I would hold on so tight to my fingers would turn blue, literally turn blue. My eyes, I'd cry so much till they burned, they literally burned within the eye sockets. They burned so bad from the tears and the pain. So I know what it's like to walk through those things. Oh. Yes, oh, I could have given in. And I could have got the pills. And I could have did this. And I could have made excuses <laughs> and been justified in doing so. I could have signed myself an insane asylum. I really could have. Because yes. you can ask Sister Jack, I call. I don't know. I just don't know if I can do this. Oh. I don't know if I can do it. Michael can tell you I'd scream. I'd holler. I didn't know what else to do. But I'd have to go back to the temple. Go back to the temple. I had to go yes. constantly over and over yes. and over. And I pray, Lord, will this ever end? Yes. Will it ever end? I've served you. I've given you my life. But there's no, we can't justify ourselves and say, oh, well, Lord, I've done this for you. But all he's done for me. You know, Brother Ralph, I, this morning it touched me so much when you was talking about the cross. I was taking the cross yesterday down. I was in here cleaning. And just that little bit of moving that cross by myself. And I drug it. <laughs> I drug it from there to there. Uh -huh. And I couldn't help but weep when I thought about God. <laughs> when I thought of how Jesus drug that old cross. Oh. And he done it all for me. Yes. He done it all for me. Yes. And I'm just so thankful tonight. You know, sometimes I often wonder, Lord, how will the end ever be? What is going to be? And he tells me, don't worry about those things. Why are you so worried about those things? Just like Hannah, why are you worried, Hannah? Don't you know? Can't you see? But at times we don't see. I was praying the other day and the Lord dropped it in my spirit through the eyes of broken. Just those little words. As a matter of fact, I text Steve. I said, oh, Eva, this would be a beautiful song. It would be a beautiful song. And then the Lord brought this to mind. And you know, sometimes in life, we go around, it's just like putting on a pair of broken glasses. We can't see. We can't. We try our best. They're broken. They shattered. And we're trying our best to find our path and where we need to go. But we can't see it clearly. It's not a clear picture. And I love the message Brother Ralph preached. Sometimes we just have to stay there. We have to st right. stand on the rock, get a grip, stand there. And I'm just so thankful. So tonight, if I just want everybody, if they don't mind, just to stand. And if you feel like coming to the altar, and just like I said, sometimes we need a cleansing. Just a purity oh, cleansing. Yeah. And I'm just so thankful for His Word. I'm thankful for all He's done tonight. Oh, hallelujah. It stands out when she said, we got to go back to the temple. And I said, i got to go back to the temple. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, because that's where I'm going to get my answer, and that's where she got to answer at the temple. i got to go back to the temple. You know what David said? My feet had well, I almost slipped. He said, I was in a horrible place. Somebody may be in a bad place. He said, my feet had almost slipped. I had almost fallen and gone down for the last time. He said, and then I went into the temple of the Lord. I went to the temple of the Lord. I was confused. I didn't understand so many questions. Why, why, why? Do some of y'all have those questions tonight? Why, 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 Lord? 
Oh, but well, we got to go back to the temple. But you know, actually, the temple is not this building here. You got to go get in touch with God, is what she was saying. I got to go get in touch with God. So, would you come tonight? Would you just come gather around this front? Maybe you're going through a dark place. 